And joining us now are two people who have lived through this nightmare and continue to every day. Manuel Oliver, he's the father of Parkland victim Joaquin Oliver, along with Marianne Jacob, who survived the Sandy Hook shooting and saved 19 children by barricading them in a closet. Thank you both for being here on this awful night, and we're hoping that that we can understand a little bit through what you've been through, and you can give us a little bit of light here. Manuel, just as Vice President uh, Harris said, enough is enough, but here we are again. So before I ask you to share your reaction with us, I do want to share your tweet where you say, Senate, House of Congress, White House, President, Vice President, Governors, lobbies, corporations, and civilians that keep ignoring our voices, expletive you a thousand times. Yes, again, you just killed 14 kids, so you don't hold back there. But I just wonder, when, when you heard today about what happened in Uvalde, Texas, what did you feel? What did you think? Well, um, I'm afraid that I was not surprised. I was very angry and mad. Um, it required something like this to happen. So, so now I can hear the vice president being as offended as I am since the last almost five years. Um, I've been trying to get this message out there of preventing this from happening. Uh, it is a problem that it's a debate that must include guns and regulations. Whoever thinks that I'm wrong right now cannot prove it because we tried everything. We, the, 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 the myth behind the good guy with the gun is just broke after what happened today in Texas, which is the land of good guys with guns. Mm. So I am mad. Um, I have mixed feelings about these uh, families. I know they are devastated at this point. Their their life, it, it feels like it's over. Uh, it's not. But I'm not I'm not in a position to give an advice to someone that just lost a kid. Absolutely. Uh, and Marianne, it's going on 10 years now, almost a full decade. Uh, possibly the age of some of these kids who died today, and yet here we are, 10 years ago, you were in school with your little ones, uh, and, and, and you did so much to help so many of them. And I just wonder what, what you're going through, what you're thinking and feeling tonight. You know, I, I think we all thought after the shooting at Sandy Hook School when 20 first graders died and six teachers, that that would drive change. And, um, and, and if that was true, Manuel wouldn't be on TV with us tonight talking about losing Joaquin, and, and these parents wouldn't be going through what they're going through today. And, and I think his point is spot on. You know, if more guns were the answer, given the fact that every year we have more guns in this country, we wouldn't be seeing more violence. We wouldn't be seeing what we see now, which is more deaths by guns, but we'd be seeing less. And, you know, our, our leaders have to have the courage to take some action because what they're doing isn't working. And every time it happens, a community says, I can't believe this happened here. And it's shocking to me, really, that after seeing all the different communities it's happened in, we still don't believe it can happen in our own community. And if we're not willing to do something, and by the way, our gun makers aren't gonna, our gun, our, our legislatures aren't gonna do anything unless we push them to do something. So vote for people who care about what you care about and make sure that they are going to drive change. Because it is shocking that we're still shocked, but, but Manuel, the, the killing of children, of little ones is is shocking. Your heart just just falls apart when you hear it. And now thinking of the parents who will have to who will have to say goodbye to those children who have to put those children in the ground. And I, and I just wonder if there's any possible comfort that that their fellow citizens that we can can give to them. How do how do you deal with that? No, there's there's no comfort possible here. Uh, what it is possible is to take advantage of the media as long as they stay in that place in Texas. Because at some point they will move on to the next shooting or to the next uh, news. Um, you need to take advantage of those cameras today to expose your anger, your sadness, your frustration, not only to our leaders. We're talking about corporations here that allow this to happen. They agree with these um, laws that are only making easier for any civilian to access 
assault rifles or handguns or whatever. This is something that happens only in America. We are known all around the world for this, for school shootings. And uh, again, I started by telling you that I'm not, I'm not surprised. It will happen again, unless we really do things in a different way. And the only thing that we haven't tried is to talk about guns in mm -hmm. Senate, in Congress, and make sure that the White House prioritizes this problem, not only by putting a half that uh, uh, flag, because that flag should stay like that forever, but also by increasing the voice of the president of a nation that is suffering this. And, and Marianne, you, you said that it seemed after Sandy Hook that, that something would have to be done. You were in the library at the time, and educators have been through so much the last couple of years of the pandemic and all, and, and we don't know the story of this particular shooter, but there are so many lost young people out there, broken young people, partly broken by the isolation of the pandemic. What th th These are shootings primarily done by young, alienated men. Is, is there an answer there? We're talking guns, but is there an answer in the shooters? There's this, this mad, murderous brokenness that, that is erupting in, in young American men. You know, I, it's these mass shootings that gain national media attention, but the fact of the matter is that 100 or more people die from gun violence every day, whether it's uh, intimate partner violence or suicide or uh, violence in our cities. And the fact of the matter is that access to weapons is what makes us unique. Uh, uh, Manuel just said the same thing. We, there's mental health issues all over the world, but other countries do not have this same problem with violence that we have. And the fact that an 18-year-old or many, many 18-year-olds can gain access to weapons without permits, without background checks, when they can't even vote is crazy. And the fact that we allow these semi-automatic weapons to be part of uh, to be available to anybody who wants them and large capacity magazines. You know, we believe that there are sensible gun laws that can protect the, the Second Amendment rights and the rights of reasonable gun owners at the same time as protecting people from this kind of gun violence. But our leaders have to have the courage to do something about it, mm. and they don't right now. And, and I should, we're waiting on a press conference to begin in your valley, but I, I want to ask you both, I've got little children nine, seven, and five. And my wife, when we heard about this, she texted me, what do we tell them? What, what do we tell them who don't have the capacity to imagine this kind of evil and terror in the world? What, are they, what do we tell them when we ask, when they ask? Support them. You know, I, I them. remember, go ahead, my mom. No, I was gonna say that um, I'm afraid that, yes, you are uh, going through a risk that I'm not going through anymore. I don't, I don't need to worry about losing my kid because I already lost it. But you do. Um, it's, it's not about um, one person or your kids in particular. It's about everyone in America. Again, 45,000 people dying because of this. And we keep pretending that we are supporting other nations because they are going through war and losing people. Uh, when we are losing 45,000 per year, we provide those guns. We provide those inactions. So we live in a war. Mm -hmm. And your kids shouldn't be in the need of understanding that. They should go to school like I went to school, have mm -hmm. fun, enjoy the day, and then go back home. Um, just make them stay safe. Amen to that, Mary. There really is no way to protect your kids from it. You know, your your kids are affected just like every other kid in the country by watching it on TV, knowing other kids who die, hiding under their desk, doing active shooter drills. It's a crazy world we live in. And, you know, whether you're walking through the grocery store and you're going to see the picture of these kids on the cover of People magazine next week, there's no way to shield your children from it. But there is a way to change it. And that's by electing people and making sure the people that you elect are accountable to you for what we need doing. And every single person in America ought to be doing that. Mm. Marianne, Jacob, Manuel, Oliver, thank you both so much for being thank here you. tonight. Thank you. Good luck. Manuel. Bye. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.